China has been endowed with some of the most picturesque surroundings in the world. Gleaming lakes, colorful flora and fauna, and an exceedingly rich cultural heritage. It is more than just a beautiful country. The roots of Chinese history are grounded deep and go back thousands of years. The name China comes has been taken from the Sanskrit word Sina. The Qin dynasty pronounced the word as Qin. The Persians had their version when they began trading with the Chinese through the Silk Route. They called it Sin. For the Greeks and the Romans, China was the land where silk came from, Ceres. It was only in 1516 that the name China appeared in the journals of Barbosa, who has narrated about his travels in the East. Prehistory Stone tools and use of fire which date back 1.36 and 1.27 million years ago respectively have been found in the region which now falls within the boundaries of China. Evidence of rice agriculture which go back to 8000 BC has been found by the Yangtze River. The Chinese were even familiar with some form of writing back in 7000 BC. The evidence to this was found in Jahu, proto writing did exist back then. The first villages began to settle in the Yellow River Valley, and the proof was found in the archaeological excavations at Ban Po Shan, which date between 5000 BC and 3000 BC. The first culture was the Yang Shao, which was followed by Longshan culture. Sia Dynasty 2070 to 1600 BC. The Xia dynasty is considered as one of the first dynasties of China. Records of Sima Chan, father of Chinese historiography, speak about an emperor Xuan Shu or Gao Yang, who was the grandson of Wang Ti to be one of the five emperors to have founded the Xia dynasty. Later, a man by the name of Yu who is believed to have solved the flood problems of the area, was made the leader of the Xia dynasty's army by the then ruling king Shun. Yu proved to be an effective leader of the army and managed to defeat the San Miao tribe, who were a grave problem to the Xia people. Shun was so happy that he declared Yu the heir to the throne. Yu was a good ruler and Xia flourished under his rule for 45 years. His son Qi took the reins of the kingdom after him but couldn't keep up to his father's expectation. Soon the Xia dynasty dwindles under its leaders, making way for the next dynasty. Ancient China Taoism and Confucianism prospered in ancient China. Feudal era took roots and China expanded both in terms of population and territory. The nation now broke into several kingdoms for the next 200 years. Shang Dynasty 1600 to 1046 BC One of the Shang leaders by the name of Cheng Tang overthrew a cruel leader Jie of the Xia Dynasty and established the Shang Dynasty. The Shang dynasty was highly stable and soon advanced both economically and culturally like writing, bronze casting, rituals and more. The records of the grand historians say that there were 31 kings who ruled the people of Shang dynasty. Written records confirming the existence of Shang dynasty have been found at Anyang. Shang people saw the nation progress for 600 years. The dynasty soon fell into the hands of King Wu, who founded the Shou dynasty. Pan Gang and Wu Ding were the greatest leaders of the dynasty. Evidence of Wu Ding's existence has been found in archaeological excavations. Zhao dynasty, 1045 to 221 BC. The people of Zhao were settlers in the agricultural basin of North China which is the lower part of the Wei River Valley. Zhao coexisted with the Shang dynasty for many years. 
They were a peace-loving tribe and detested war. King Wen made military alliances with neighboring chiefs and disrupted the Shang court. However, it was his successor King Wu who defeated a 700,000 huge Shang army with just 50,000 men. The people under the Shang king were so unhappy that even the military leaders did not wish to fight. In fact, they took King Wu's side. The Shang ruler committed suicide in his palace. Wu did not take the throne as the leader, instead let their nominated ruler rule the city of Yao Li. Wu's brothers kept a strict vigilance over Yao Li. Wu returned after some time and his son King Cheng took over the Zhao dynasty. There was a series of rebellion that followed in his rule because Cheng's uncle, also his regent, wanted to usurp the throne. The young king did manage to take over his responsibilities after seven years. Art and culture flourished, trade expanded in the Xiao period, and Confucianism, Taoism, and legalism were developed. Between 476 and 221 BC, China was in a state of war. This period is known as Warring States. Seven leaders fought to unite and control China. King Nan was the last ruler of Zhao. He was killed in a battle and his end marked the beginning of Qin Dynasty. Imperial China Qin Dynasty 221-206 BC The name China has been taken from the word Qin or Qin. This dynasty was very short-lived, but it is an important period in the history of China. It was the first time that the title emperor was used by a leader in China. Legalism flourished in this period, and the Emperor Shi Huangdi was the one who laid the foundations of the Great Wall of China and built the Terracotta Army. But the emperor also restricted education to masses. His thought was to keep them illiterate, as uneducated people are easy to control. Wang Di's son Hu Hai was weak, and the people were quick to revolt. The royal people were slain in Xianyang and Qin Dynasty came to an end. The nation erupted with battles, and slowly the most powerful took control. The Han Dynasty 206 BC to 220 AD. Liu Bang founded the Han Dynasty. The dynasty is the longest imperial dynasty. Paper was found during the time of Han Dynasty by a eunuch named Kai Lun. Paper was mostly used to wrap fish instead of writing. Wooden tables and bamboo slips were used to document their records. Sima Chen's records of the Grand Historian also belong to the Han Dynasty. Another important development of this dynasty was the Silk Road, which helped in the growth of trade. With new roads open for merchants to trade with China, the nation grew and prospered. When emperors left without any successors, there was a situation of chaos in China. And this is exactly what happened in the last few years of Han period. Combined with this mayhem were floods, tremors, and plagues which further pulled the Han to their end. Dong Zhao, who was a warlord, took control over the capital in 190 AD and put Liu Xie, a Han dynasty member, on the throne. Xie was just a child and Zhao controlled the power. Xie gave up the throne in 220 AD and marked the end of Han Dynasty. Dark Ages in China 220-581 After the Han Dynasty, China was left in a state of disorder and pandemonium. Political instability in the region encouraged the foreigners to take control of the regions that were less powerful. Northern China was occupied by many foreign tribes while South China was controlled by the Chinese leaders. Nevertheless, 
this period shouldn't be mistaken for underdevelopment. There was political volatility and lack of harmony, but when it came to culture, there was a lot of development in these times. China had become a land of multiculture with several contributions from the foreigners. Medieval China Sui Dynasty 581 to 618 Even though the Sui Dynasty lasted two kings long, they had managed to unite northern and southern China. The two emperors were Wen Ti and his son Yang Ti. Their military system was strong, which is why they were able to control China. The nation went through land reforms, so smaller farmers did not have to face the atrocities of the richer farmers. Kings of the Sui dynasty joined the Yellow and Yangtze rivers and built the Grand Canal. The Sui were ambitious, but their military campaigns failed, which led to the loss of the king's prestige and importance. Yang Ti was assassinated by his own generals, and the kingdom was taken by Li Yuan. The Tang Dynasty 618-907 Li Yuan established the Tang Dynasty, but Taizong was the one who brought reforms in the dynasty. China went through more transformations when Wu Zechan, who was a female ruler, took control of China. Her successor Xuan Zong further strengthened China. Some of the known developments during this period were gas stoves, gunpowder, air conditioning, and printing. Besides this were cultural and technological advances. The latter rulers of the dynasty indulged in their own pleasures and neglected their work. What followed was a divided China the period of five dynasties and ten kingdoms. It was only later that the Song Dynasty took control. The Song Dynasty 960-1297 Zhao Guangyin founded the Song Dynasty. He was an important general in the Tang Dynasty and gained enough power to become the emperor of China. He ruled by the name of Taizu, and was succeeded by his brother Taizong. There was stability during their rule. The Kiran Liao dynasty and Western Xi's dynasty in Northeast and Northwest respectively coexisted with the Song. The downfall of the Song dynasty was caused because of the Mongol attacks. Mongol rule, Yuan dynasty, 1279-1368. The Song period came to an end when Kublai Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan, conquered China. He founded the Yuan Dynasty and Dadu, what is presently Beijing. Famous traveler Marco Polo made several visits to China and mentioned about the grandeur of China in his book. The Yuan ruled for several years, contributing to technological and cultural development. The latter Yuan rulers could not maintain their influence on their people and rivalries became common. Famine, flood, and drought added to this situation and fell to the Ming Dynasty. Final Dynasties Ming Dynasty 1368-1644 The founder of Ming Dynasty was Zhu Yuanzhang. Beijing and Nanjing became the important centers under his rule. Ming Dynasty greatly indulged in making and repairing the Great Wall of China. Even the Forbidden City was in its highest magnificence. The Ming Dynasty discontinued all types of maritime and banned the Chinese from sailing abroad. The Shaanxi earthquake was a big hit to the population of the Ming. The Qing Dynasty, 1644-1911 The Manchus founded the Ming Dynasty and took over China. Emperor Kangxi and Qianlong were the most famous emperors of this period. China had the largest economy in the world 
and was also the largest empire. The nation suffered hits from the foreign invaders, Britain, Germany, Russia, Japan, and France. China had become a semi-imperial country after the Opium War in 1840. This period also saw the fierce Yihetuan movement or the Boxer Rebellion. The rebellion was anti-colonial, anti-Christian, and anti-foreign movement. The officials of China were split into two. One section supported the Boxers and was led by Yi Kuang, Prince Qing, and the other supported the foreigners. The Boxer Protocol signed on September 7, 1901 between Eight Nation Alliance and Qing Empire ended this rebellion. The Republic of China Era, 1912-1949 Sun Yat-sen was a revolutionist and he ended the rule of Qing Dynasty. He led the Republican Revolution of 1911. Sun was soon forced to hand over the power to Yuan Shikai, who was in charge of the new army. Yuan soon died in 1916, and China was again left in despair. People's Republic of China, 1949 to present War and revolts continued in China. On October 1, 1949, Mao Zedong took over China and founded the People's Republic of China. Today, the Communist Party of China runs the country. It is one of the strongest and most powerful economies in the world. China has trotted thousands of years while establishing a strong cultural history for its people.